Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. A double turn of two of Raw's biggest stars, Healer Mania runs wild. And Lesnar Joe goes three times as long as Goldberg Lesnar at Survivor Series. I am Luke Owen, and goodness gracious, this is Great Balls of Fire 2017 in about four minutes. The power of Tozawa wasn't on the Neville level as the King of the Cruiserweights retained his title on the pre-show. Neville won by kicking the ropes into Akira Tozawa's Great Balls of Fire in a decent match with a flat finish. Later in the show, Akira Tozawa told Titus O'Neil that he wanted a rematch. The heat for this feud has been non-existent in the build, with neither character given motivation to want to fight each other. The two did try to get the crowd into the match though, with some hard-hitting offense, including a wicked spike DDT onto the ring apron and a superplex, which Rollins landed awkwardly on the knee he hurt just before WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt pinned the face of WWE 2K18 with Sister Abigail after a thumb to the eye in what was a pretty boring match. There was a great video package before this encounter, which further highlighted that it was too early to break this team up. Enzo then cut a fantastic promo before Cass came out with his new hilariously generic entrance music. This was more or less a squash match, with Cass picking up the win via a big boot. What's interesting though is that the commentary team treated this like the end of the feud, asking what's next for Cass after this victory. Shimaru picked up the first fall of this match within 16 seconds after a Cesaro distraction and Sheamus bro kick, and then went two up after 10 minutes. The Hardys scored one back at the 12 minute mark, but were counted out just after the halfway point to make it 3-1. With seven minutes left, the Hardys scored a convoluted pinfall and then evened things up at the 27 minute mark via a top rope twist of fate. At one point, Matt got busted up really bad over his eye, but thankfully there was no ref stoppage or break due to it being so close to the end of the match. It actually looked like it was going to go to sudden death, but Cesaro pinned Jeff after he hit the Swanton Bomb with 30 seconds left on the clock, and the buzzer went off just after Jeff hit another twist of fate. This was a great finish to a really well worked match and the crowd was super into the closing moments. There was an incredible spot at the start of this match where Sasha took Bliss down by her arm and then the goddess sold it like she'd broken it. Everyone from Sasha to Bliss to the ref the commentary team sold it like a legit injury spot and the crowd really bought into it. But it was all a ruse as Bliss revealed she's double jointed. It was a really unique spot but sadly it didn't play into the match at all. Why didn't they save this until the end? Instead, Bliss worked over Sasha's back, which she hurt on the ring apron. This was a pretty good outing, but it was let down by a lazy ending that we just saw on the last WWE pay-per-view, with the champion taking the count-out loss to retain her title. After the match, Sasha Banks attacked Bliss and delivered a double knees from the announcer table, signaling that this feud will continue. Miz won after multiple interference spots from Maurice and the Miseraj. What, what else do you want me to say? What else is there to say? Miz worked over Dean's knee to the point where he couldn't even stand up and it was so bad Dean jumped off the rope three times and did a running tope. This was a brutal match at times and did a great job of getting Braun over as an unstoppable monster, including no selling various chair shots from the big dog. Braun also did his run into the post and people dodge out of the way spot three different times before shaking it up by running into the video screen at the back with Roman dodging out of the way to a massive pop and holy sh** chance. But it wasn't enough to earn him the win. Although Braun Strowman was basically down and out, Roman beat himself by missing a spear directly into the ambulance like a complete idiot. The real story came after the match when sore loser Roman Reigns speared the conquering Braun Strowman from the ambulance doors, threw him into the back of the ambulance, and then drove it out into the arena parking lot where he attempted murder by backing into a truck at high speed. In a brilliant moment of realism, Kurt Hall Hawkins and Heath Slater were then sent out for an impromptu match while they dual screened the aftermath of Roman trying to kill Braun Strowman. Heath won the match, but the finish wasn't even shown on TV as fire engines arrived to try and break Strowman out of the ambulance. Strowman was great in this angle, refusing medical attention despite bleeding all over the place. This actually felt like a babyface turn for the monster among men as Braun heroically walked away from the crash on its own two feet. The commentators kept putting over how miraculous it was Braun survived, while demonizing Roman for driving the ambulance into the truck with a human being in the back. With such a big angle, you'd think the crowd would be dead for this match, but they came alive 
as soon as Samoa Joe's music hit and remained hot throughout. Joe attacked Lesnar before the bell and drove him through the Spanish announce table via a urinagi, but the beast was able to get back into the ring. This was a hell of a big guy match with multiple punches, kicks and shops, but it only went six minutes. There were six German suplex spots, multiple attempts at the Kikina clutch, and there were several moments where it looked like Joe was going to win, but more time could have made this a much better match. In the end, it only took one F5 to put down the Samoan submission machine, and Lesnar retained the Universal Championship. Brock did do a fantastic job in putting Joe over in defeat, and there is a lot of room left open for a possible rematch. So that was Great Balls of Fire 2017. Here's the usual Raw ratings rundown. In all, core, average, poor, and ball. I'll give my thoughts in a moment, but first vote in the poll above my head to let me know what you thought. I'll announce the result in tomorrow's news. Like Extreme Rules, the wins were heavily stacked in the heel column. Neville, Bliss, Shimaro, and Miz all retained their titles, and Braun beat Roman. Lesnar is often positioned as a heel, but he played the babyface in peril on this show, so that could go either way. Which means the only true babyface who won their match or won a title was Heath Slater, and that wasn't even shown on TV. It's a common problem in WWE at the moment, but that could change now that Braun Strowman has seemingly turned babyface, and it will be interesting to see how they follow this up on tonight's Raw, especially if they have fully turned Roman Reigns heel. Great Balls of Fire was a pretty middling pay-per-view, with only the tag match really delivering. Roman and Braun was a fun brawl, but it was more about the following angle than the match itself, and Lesnar Joe just wasn't given the time it fully deserved. Everything else on this show was pretty much average. Great Balls of Fire 2017 is average. Remember The Undertaker's forgotten gimmick? And what was the real reason behind WWE firing Austin Aries? Click the video to the left to find out more. Press subscribe and support WrestleTalk on Patreon. I have been Luke Owen and that was wrestling.